Hello, this is Wampire. Um, here to share my life philosophy, which which sounds way too serious. So let me just say, uh, this is my just my two cents. Um, the reason why I'm making this video is I just saw a uh, documentary on YouTube about a professional wrestler that I grew up watching. The guy's name is Giant Baba. Um, when I was a kid in Japan, I was watching professional wrestling um, very very uh, uh, commonly on a regular basis. I was a fan of the of the sport because um, you know I grew up very very sick as a kid so naturally I became attracted to or, or you know enjoyed watching strong things. I fantasized that I wanted to become like a professional wrestler. I wanted to become strong you know and to be able to throw people around and you know act that way. Um, of course, Dracula was another one, and I, I also liked sharks a lot too, because I just wanted to swim in the ocean and be free and and uh, fearless and and strong like a great white shark. That's that's what I wanted, you know. But instead, in reality, I was always in the hospital, so you know, I was having a hard time with life. But um, yeah, there were two wrestlers that I was watching primarily, two different organizations. Um, one was New Japan Professional Wrestling. The other one was All Japan Professional Wrestling. Giant Baba was from All Japan Professional Wrestling. The The guy in, in charge of New Japan Pro, Pro Wrestling was a guy called Antonio Inoki. And he was known for his fighting spirit. So when I was a kid, I grew up idolizing more Antonio Inoki. Now that I'm older, I can appreciate the approach that Giant Baba took. Two very different individuals two guys that are you know the head of their organizations and two guys that climbed to the top of the mountain but they did it in both very very different ways Antonio Inoki was I wanna say um, much more flamboyant much more competitive uh, much more aggressive and like I said he was the epitome of fighting spirit in his uh, professional wrestling performances I mean he would show guts and fighting spirit and he would fight and it was brutal matches and he fought martial arts people and stuff like that um, he fought judo guys boxers karate guys you know all, all that and, and he had some brutal matches uh, giant Baba on the other hand was famous for having more of a how do you call it a happy fun family professional wrestling approach and the guy uh, also one of his things was to have as many matches as possible I think he he wanted to set a, a, a Guinness record uh, of the guy who had the most matches at, ever so he was one of those guys that was very long term and very consistent you know um, and now like I said looking looking back on it um, I, I can appreciate the giant Baba approach now more and, and uh, here's one of the things that, that I want to share with you all, okay? Um, so, back then when he was just entered the professional wrestling school, before a match, uh, he, he had to do 3,000 Hindu squats, okay? Hindu squats is a brutal, it's, it's an advanced exercise. Uh, you could look it up. I don't recommend that you do it because it is an advanced exercise, meaning if you do it wrong, you can get hurt very easily. But... Um, yeah, 3,000 Hindu squats before a match without rest. He says it took him two and a half, <coughs> excuse me, two and a half hours to, to complete this exercise. He had to do it every day, and by the end, there would be a puddle of sweat on the floor. If you could imagine a, a, a puddle, you know, not just a couple of drops, but a whole puddle. Two and a half hours of just doing. Hindu squats, I, I can't even imagine. That's that's just incredible. But anyway, that's the kind of work ethic that this guy comes from. So, so also the other guy, Antonio Inoki too. They they're both from the same stable essentially. But this is the kind of you know schooling that they went through. Anyway, um, like like I said, Antonio Inoki had a very different approach where he was very aggressive and he was fighting, and he gambled a lot. He said he had a gambling problem in real life. But he also said, you know, he would kind of do that in business where he would, you know, take uh, risks. And even in his fights, he'd be like, come on, bring it. You know, he had that kind of attitude where he wasn't afraid of anything, anybody, anywhere type attitude, you know. 
And um, I remember my mom, you know, ta- she said to me, he's like, she was like, you are, you, you have some disadvantages. You're always, you know, you're born sick. You're always in the hospital. So you're going to have to overcome that with, with, with mental strength. You're going to have to work, overcome that because you don't have the, the size, the, the physicality. So you're going to have to overcome that with guts. So, you know, I was watching Antonio Inoki and I idolized him and stuff. But seriously, folks, you know, after a while, you know, I can't always give 110% in my matches or in school or in sports or whatever. I, I wouldn't last, you know. It, I just grew tired of it. I just wanted to be left alone. I just wanted to be in peace. I just grew tired of fighting everything in my life. And and uh, like I said, now that I look back on it, the giant Baba approach of just being more appreciative um, and just um, consistent and, and just do little by little, you know, and just keep going like that, that kind of attitude, you know, of, of long-term longevity, you know, I, I can really see the value in that now. Um, and in order to do that, if you are going to be long term somewhere, you know, you want to make the environment a good place. You can't, you know, be I am the top, you know, apex predator here and just kill everybody else, you know, and dominate everybody else. You can't. That's not a going to be a long term type environment. Someone else is going to come and you know come after your throat type thing. But so Baba didn't have that kind of approach, you know. He, like I said, he had more of a family. We're all fam- family. We're all in a business together. He had that kind of approach, and and once again, the the teamwork mentality. I, I can really appreciate that. Anyway, um, this guy, uh, this this uh, famous interview guy, talk show guy, went to Baba's house, Giant Baba's house, and went to go interview the guy. Giant Baba's a very shy guy, you know. He's supposed to be a very nice and shy, gentle giant type guy. And uh, so this is one of those rare interview occasions. And anyway, uh, the guy asked him, like, you know, so do you train every day? And, and he goes, yeah, I, I train every day, of course. And he goes, even here, I train every day. And uh, the interview was being done at his resort home, right? So he said, yeah, even here, I train. And uh, he showed him um, what he does. And it it looks like dumbbells, but it's not. It's made of wood. So it's not, it's not for lifting weights, you know. It's... It's shaped like a dumbbell. You put it on the ground and you do push-ups, right? And uh, he says, I do push-ups with those. And he says, uh, this is the number one exercise. So according to Giant Baba, this is his favorite thing. And he says, uh, uh, doing this trains your abs, legs, and everything. Uh, it makes you stronger in a balanced way. So uh, the guy the guy that's interviewing Baba actually, you know, he tries it for the camera and he does like, he he goes one real slowly and he barely does two and then on the third one he he just collapses he can't do three right and uh, Baba's like he says to the guy he goes I'll give you those so even if it's just ten a day you should try it so so Baba says that to the guy and he goes look if you can only do five then that's fine just do five and tomorrow you can do six and the next day do seven and you know this this struck so it strikes a chord in me, you know, it's, it's just, he's so nice, that was such a, the way he said it too, was so encouraging, he's like, dude, if you can only do five, then that's fine, do five, this is a guy that does, you know, he came from the old school, where he was doing 3,000, you know, Hindu squats, where, you know, he, he said he had to do them, do them non-stop before a match, because, you know, I mean, can you imagine, you don't want to get tired before a match, but he's doing 3,000, and he says if you're slacking or you're not doing them right, the, the head guy comes over and beats you up. And, and he said one time, you know, he got beaten, at least one time he got beaten up, and then so he went to the hospital because he got beaten up by his, his coach. And then when he came back, the coach was like, you went to the hospital for that? And he beat him up some more. It was just like, so he comes from that kind of environment, and he's telling this guy, dude, if you can only do five, just do five. How nice, you know, it, it's just really struck, uh, struck a chord in me when he said that. And then he says, um, okay, when it becomes hard, when, when your exercise becomes hard, but you keep doing it anyway, he says, that's a professional. He says, the layman, the amateur, is when it becomes hard, they stop. That's the amateur, you know. But he still recommends to everybody that um, when it becomes hard, just do 
one more, one more repetition. And he says, that's true for anything in life. So that was his advice. And uh, when, you, when you want to stop, he says, just do one more. You know, and, and this, <laughs> it, I, just, I just thought it was awesome. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, so my admiration for the guy went up even more. You know, uh, like I said, I, before when you have Antonio Inoki and Giant Baba in the room, it's it's like all the attention goes to to Antonio Inoki because he's he's the one that's you know picking fights with people he's the one that you know he, he he's like I'm the star and I'm willing to fight for it you know he has that kind of mentality and Giant Baba is more the guy who will just you know, stay in the background and but you know keep in mind they both became world champs so they both became you know uh, they both rose to the top of the mountain it's just that they took very very different approaches. You know, so it's just something to to think about, and um, you know, I I would rather climb the mountain the way that the giant Baba did. You know, I that to me I I could appreciate and admire that more. But uh, anyway, so just wanted to share that. Thank you for listening, and uh, take care, folks.